Welcome to Texas Trade Day's Vendor Learning Series. This is Kristen and I'll be walking you through how to create a Facebook event for your Facebook business page. You'll first want to start off by going to the main page, your Facebook business page. If you were to create an event by clicking the blue create up in the blue bar and then clicking on event you'll be creating an event under your personal profile and you don't want that for your Facebook business page you want the Facebook business page to be the one creating the event so what you'll do is you'll go over to your navigation menu off to the left underneath your Texas uh, underneath your page name where you see Texas Trade Days LLC so you'll click on events and then you'll create click on create event now some of y'all may be wondering why there I'm showing you how to create an event in another video I showed you how to add an event creating an event would be real good for your business if you did home parties if you like to host little meetups or networking events things like that for your business and so creating an event right on your Facebook business page can really help you advertise and promote that event that you're holding you can create private things uh, but just know that whenever you go to create an event through your Facebook business page, all the events are public. Because your page is public, so your event is going to be public for the page. The page is the creator and the owner of the event, not just a co-host, okay? So when you click on create, you have this pop-up window that shows up and it auto populates what the um, cover photo is sometimes just that it's it there if you don't like it just click on the X in that upper right hand corner to remove the photo like I just showed you so we're going to upload a photo and that's the first thing I like to do is is to upload a photo now there's different sizes for uh, Facebook photos there's different size for your your Facebook profile picture your cover photo the event cover photo and group cover photo if you want to know what those sizes are a quick internet search for those kind of photos and then sizes will show you what you need so this is just going to be a mock event it will go live to give you the full effect of how to create an event but luckily we have a really forgiving and engaging uh, follower base on Facebook so I'm gonna have a little bit of fun they like comedy I get high engagement on relatable uh, funny posts and uh, so we're gonna just kinda throw this up here and hopefully we can get some of them engaged with us but if they don't that's okay too it's it's about time to pick up the kiddos so alright so I'm going to choose a photo that uh, I want to show for my event so all you would do was would be is to click on upload photo and video alright since we've got the photo uploaded if the photo is too small then you'll see below the upload photo area uh, a little warning a red warning that pops up and Facebook will let you know what size the photo needs to be at least um, so it needs to be that size or bigger so just choose or if you do uh, if you create your own photos then just go back to your photo editor and uh, make sure that it meets the size requirements so I found me a funny photo just a test And then you want to go down and give it a name. Oh wait, we see there is an information icon. So hover over that and you get the pop-up bubble that says we recommend using a photo or a video with an aspect ratio of 1.9 to 1 or 
1200 by 628 pixels and videos between 30 seconds and 5 minutes. Alright, so that's a great helpful tip for you right there. So the next thing we want to do is add an event name. You want the event name to be uh, catching as well as descriptive of what it's going to be. But you only have 64 characters uh, to do that in. So right here it shows 0 out of 64, 0 slash 64. That means I've used 0 characters out of a 64 limit character space. Characters are letters, numbers, special uh, symbols, and spaces. So you can only use a 64 of those in any combination. So, like I said, they like to be funny. Let's think of something funny. All right. So I've labeled it, given the event a name, come harass our test event. And then the location, you can change this. It defaults to your Facebook business page. And so you want to change this. And you can change it to the address. And sometimes whenever you type in an address, that it will pull up another page. I'll show you an example of that. Red Bluff is not a good one. Well, it looks like they're changing that. So, okay, you can type in the address and then you can select the correct one that you want to use, let's say, um, I'm doing an event for our Brenham Trade Days, then I would select the top one. Or if I wanted to associate it with a page, I can do that too. Just by typing in the page name. See? It still gives me the address, but it's a familiar location to people on Facebook. So if you have this option, then definitely do that. Uh, so that you had you add a sense of familiarity. They don't think that they're going to, you know, some random place off some side street somewhere. Uh, if they do attend the event, uh, if it's public, of course, on your Facebook business page, it would be public. Um, regardless so I like to add that element of uh, familiarity so people know where they're going so since this is a Facebook event some people like to put in Facebook and they'll choose the Facebook headquarters the HQ page which is one hacker way if they do an online event which you can also use this for too. And then some will just use their page name, just leave the default. Okay, so for this one, we're going to go ahead and leave the default. If you have any questions, of course, there's an information icon there too. You can select it or hover over it, and a pop up message will come up and it says a specific location helps guests know where to go. And then once you've entered in the location, you can drop down to the description. This is the event description. Uh, you can put in a lot of information here, but just know after so many characters uh, and lines of text that it will end up being a see more. So you want to try to keep this to as short of a paragraph as possible. Uh, however, you want to make sure that all your important information is there, in my opinion. Um, if it's leaving out important information versus clicking on the see more, I will always, always, hold on, I most, almost always will do the, um, 
important information. Let me get rid of this message. Okay. So with that, what I did here was I was able to save this event as draft. If you remember, you just saw down at the bottom right hand corner, it was save, uh, cancel or save as draft. I was able to click on save as draft. And uh, as long as you have some information in the description, you choose a category, it'll let you continue. And then this is what the draft event looks like. And of course, it says it isn't avail visible to anyone until it's published. So, and then if you want to edit it still, and then just click edit, and then you can get back to where you were. All right. So, uh, with the descriptions, I said be short and sweet, but make sure that you have all the information, important information everybody needs to know in the event description. Um, if it, like I said, if it, uh, if there's a choice between leaving out information, important information, and or seeing the see more uh, link that I would always opt to have the see more link just so that I have the important information in the description. So again, I'm being funny. And then for the category, it also has an information icon there too. The categories make it easier for people interested in that category to discover your event. So I'm going to choose category because we're trying to be funny over here. So once you've selected the category, then you can go ahead and set the start and end times. So we're going to go ahead and start this for today, but you can choose any date in the future you want to do. So we're going with today, and then you can choose the time. You can scroll and choose your time this way, or you can type it in. There we go. You don't need to add the zero in front of the single digit hour. So let's go ahead and set this one for just a few minutes ahead of the current time. And we'll end it. Mm, let's end it at five. Five o'clock. Okay. And of course, you can end it here too. Uh, Facebook does have a limit on how long an event can be. I think it can only be like a week or two. It'll let you know. And then here's where you would add co hosts. So you want to add yourself as a co host because then whenever you go to click going, it will show up in your personal um, events uh, list. So what you'll end up doing is 
when you go to the events tab on your personal profile or your personal account it will show up kind of like this on the left where it says events and you see events calendar and then the name of our event the birthdays discover and hosting it will show up under hosting so those are all the events that you will uh, that's our, that are associated with you so you don't have to worry about searching or going straight to the page that you can just access it that way it's a lot quicker you can go and edit you know it just saves you a few steps and you'll get notifications for the event too otherwise they'll go straight to your notifications for your page and I'll show you what those are so I'm going to add me And then you can add a schedule and what's a schedule it says schedules let guests know what is happening at your event and when so if you have uh, I don't know let's say you have a couple of speakers like from one hour you're hosting a home party for an example and it's kind of like there's a bunch of you there and you'll have Sally at three o'clock and she's going to be doing her little presentation for her shop and then Susie at four o'clock will do hers you can set up an, a schedule and you can put that up there then keywords keywords help people on Facebook find your event and you want to try to find one that's as close to your event type and page type there is and it's not like a big drop-down menu it's just all suggestions based on what you type in So sometimes it's just trial and error. We're gonna say improv company. So we are kid friendly so if you're kid friendly check that if you have volunteer opportunities check that and as you see if you have not entered in the only three keywords you can possibly enter in it triggered the volunteering keyword automatically now get rid of volunteering the checkbox is unchecked see how that works I uncheck the checkbox and the vol volunteering keyword disappears too okay all right here's admission you can set tickets create tickets you can confirm attendance the guests respond going to reserve a spot and use messenger to provide details and confirm their attendance so you can enter in the spots available always hover over these information icons put in request details you put in custom questions and they have suggestions on how to do that the information icon You can create tickets. You want to create tickets. And you have links here that'll take you to inf from additional information on Eventbrite. And then information about being a new Eventbrite host, as well as a learn more link. So click on those if you have any questions about creating a ticket on Facebook for your event 
and then you can add a tickets link if you already have one so post permissions um, it defaults to anyone can post in the event under the discussions tab of the event or you can set it to only admins can post There's post approval default. It's unchecked. This post must be approved by a host or co-host. So you would want to check that if you want to have to approve a post or each post. But I will say that even though this remains unchecked for many of mine, some of y'all see that when you go to post an event that it's awaiting approval. I don't have this checked so you may still get approval notifications from Facebook for a post that should automatically be posted in the event even though it doesn't trigger a spam filter that Facebook has so it's just one of those things that you really got to keep an eye on and that's why it's always good to add yourself as a co-host so that you get those notifications more timely than having to rely on the notifications that may or may not come through your page and then messaging, if you check that box, then it puts up a message link or a message button on the event. So people can send a message to your page. Uh, if they want more information, the event will show up in the message as, a, as an attachment along with their question. Then guest lists, that's like where you can see who's attending and who's not or who's interested. If you don't want to display that to people then or publicly, then uncheck this display guest list checkbox. It's checked by default, so just check it. So if at any time you're like, oh no, this, this event has canceled, or no, I don't want to finish this draft, you can always go to the bottom left and click the delete event link. Otherwise, you can click save. Oh, we're now past that time. So we're going to start at 4.30. We'll still end it at 5. Okay. Now we can click save. Facebook will always let you know there's a problem. See, I checked AM. See what, see what it did there? Let's go to PM. There we go. All right, so the event's still a draft. Otherwise, it would be publishing, okay? So since I had to save it as a draft, oh, let me go back. Hold on. We don't want this to go into tomorrow. No, today. All right, go and save. There we go, we fixed it. Let's refresh the screen. All right, so it shows today from 4.30 to 5.30. It's also handy, too, that they give, Facebook gives a reminder and gives you what the current outcome uh, forecast, weather forecast will be for the location of the event. All right, so we're ready. Let's go ahead and publish this draft. All right, so what this did is that it took me away from the Facebook business page, and now I'm just at the event um, as a personal uh, Facebook account. I'm going to get rid of this create tickets. So I'm going to go ahead and click going, see where it says hosted by Texas Trade Aids LLC, but then it has one co-host pending. Nobody sees this except for you. So that's what the question mark is. Only hosts of this event can see pending co-hosts. So the way that you can go ahead and accept that request is by clicking going. 
see how it disappears. All right, so now you have the permissions to access this event. It shows you're going here. It's been um, noted in the pages event section under the event tab and everybody in their news feed will now see that this event has been created. A new event's been created for the page. I'll show you what I mean. We go over to the events once we're back on the page. Now you see our event for today. Come harass our test event. Okay. Now it shows up under upcoming events. Come harass our test event. And then it added it as a post. So when you go to create an event through your Facebook business page, it will automatically add that event as a post to your business page. But it does not do that when you go to add an event from somewhere else. Okay? So you would have to manually share that as we discussed in the add event video. So, but it does share for create an event through your Facebook page. Okay? All right. So let's go back to the event. Go ahead and refresh the page. All right, so a few moments have passed and I refreshed the screen. Now you can see just on the event page a few insights that are coming in already. Over here in the top left hand section or right hand section, you'll see 57 people have been reached in the last seven days. Of course, it's only just been a few minutes. And then one responses. And then your ticket sales, this would show up if you had tickets available. And then once you get enough data and people reached and people responding to the event, then you'll start getting statistics for your audience for the specific event. So right now it has not been advertised. It has only been uh, added to the Facebook business page. Um, and automatically post it to the page as a new event and you see already uh, responses are well the people reached are starting to tick away so refresh the screen and see what's happening okay so it's that time of day that this will probably be a little slower but once people settle down uh, then they get on Facebook then this number will increase. I like to watch the insights section uh, especially when I first create an event because that helps get, tell me whether or not I should invest in boosting the event. So if any time you wanted to boost the event which is putting out an, an ad for the event to get more responses and all you can click boost the event and then you can go through creating an ad okay so watch this and see how it's doing if it's dragging and after about 24 hours you're really not seeing much improvement then consider placing an ad if you scroll down 
you'll see another place where you can boost the event to your promotion section and advanced options if you click on it it will have a drop down menu with a link to take you over to the ads manager the section below it is recommended actions so again Facebook likes to give you tips uh, through along the way to help you uh, increase your engagement help you advertise and sh get the word out and get more um, responses and get a bigger reach <clears throat> so the recommended actions for this new event would be share an event share the event so you can share it to your newsfeed you click on that the window pops up you can choose pages you manage or you can go above that see the upside down triangle click on that you can share it to your timeline share it to a friend's timeline share in a group share in another event which this is only available on the computer you cannot access share an event for anything um, except for on the computer you can even do that if you go to the uh, internet browser on your smartphone um, and then you click the desktop version in your internet your smartphone's internet browser and uh, such as Chrome which is what I'm using here um, that it still won't give you that option even when you go that way away from the app you can only do it from the desktop version of Facebook on your computer of course we're already at share on a page you manage and then you'll be able to share it in private messenger too so you can share it privately with your friends okay you can create a post and this here down at the bottom kind of just right of center of the post window it shows you where you're posting so creating a post does not mean that it's going to go on your Facebook business page or on your personal account your wall <clears throat> it will show you that it's going to be a post within this event be just like going over to the discussions tab or coming up here and writing a post you see how at the bottom here it says the same thing because that's where it's going to post and then if you had a ticket link you can track your ticket sales then it says see more and the other tip is to add an event video then so click that And it takes you right back to editing the editing the event. Gotta love that. So there's no place here for you to add an event video except for the cover photo. Okay. Where it says event photo or video, it'd be right here. Okay. We're gonna cancel it. If any time that the event needs to be canceled you can click cancel and you have two options you can cancel the event so if you cancel your event guests will be notified you'll be able to access the event page but you won't be able to edit the event if you delete the event if you delete the event you're, uh, you won't be able to access it again if you'll want to come back to it you can just cancel your event instead so what you should do when you go to cancel the event is add a post letting people know why you canceled it because you will send out not only a cancellation notification but you'll also send out a post notification because right off the bat people are going to wonder what happened so you want them to be able to get that information so be sure to post in this text box here about why that event was canceled 
during your cancellation. Then when you're done, you can click confirm. And you're like, no, no, this is an accident. Just click cancel. So let's get out of this. <clears throat> We're going to cancel out of that. Let's go over the details, the basic details. So we have your event photo. You can change it anytime. You have your event name, the date that it's public. It's a publicly posted event. So anybody can find it in the calendar of events over here and under discover. It shows who the host is and that links to your business page. It shows the date, like today, the time. Of course, it has a general forecast and it has a location. If you have a ticket link or you decided to create tickets on Facebook, then below this you'll have a way to get the tickets. But as you see, it's not required. Then you can post. You can write a post. You can add a photo or a video. And then you can start a live video. Okay. And you can even do a live video from your mobile phone too. Uh, through the event. You'll want to be inside the event before you click post and do the live video though. Otherwise it will probably go to either your personal account feed, news feed, or it will go to your if you're on your business page trying to post and that live video will post to your business page instead of in the event. So be sure that you're in the event if you want to do a live video inside the event. Everything you want to do inside the event must be done within the event itself. And then you can invite friends. This is another tip too I like to tell everybody about. So you have the share option up here. You also have a reminder down here. So you can click on share. And this pop-up, you just hover over in the pop-up menu comes up and here's what you should do for events that you are attending whether you created them added them or you're going to be attending them share with not only on your wall or in messenger but invite your friends so you can start ticking off this number these numbers down here okay and you will see here these numbers grow when you start doing that okay so the way this works is you click on invite friends and then these are all your friends you can invite all right you can select all and all these are selected and hit send invites okay or if you just want to select a few like i'll invite carol alexandra angelica we'll do heather Nicole, Kathleen, oh, give me one more, ah, I'm going to stop here, okay, so I selected some of our vendors, I'm going to go ahead and send those invites to them, okay? And you can break down your friends list by all friends, you know, under suggested on the left here. You can search for them. You can click on all friends or you can break them down by all of these, okay? And you just click on more if you want more, okay? So that kind of helps you sort through your friends too, especially those for the events that that I've attended you know and others may be interested in that or interested in the groups and things you do that they may also be interested in the event as well okay it doesn't matter what event whether you created it added it or you're attending it okay you can do this for any of them on Facebook I'm going to send invites
All right, see what it did to our reach? It increased our reach. So the more people that you invite that way, the more people will be reached. So especially if you're a vendor at an event and you've added the event to your page and then, or you're, you're saying you're going, be sure to come over here and click invite friends. I cannot stress this enough. The more we do this, you know, the, the, the event host should do it. And then everybody that's attending should do that. And the more we can collectively work together to increase the reach and advertise, the better it will be for everybody, okay? So it's really important that you invite your friends. Sharing is good. Sharing really is caring. But inviting your friends, man, you know, you can't get any better than that. That is the best way to do it. And you saw how this jumped up. Just simply 30 people reached it was at 57 and I invited just a handful of people and it just soared to immediately 30 more people reached so that's how important that is okay now I've got quite a few friends on my personal account here I'm going to share this to it and I'm going to share this to my friends okay this is only going to be to my friends nobody else will see this so it's been shared to my timeline. It's on my personal profile wall. Give it a moment. You see, it didn't have a big and as big of an impact as inviting your friends by the pop-up the drop-down menu under share so I it is super 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 important to do that for every event that you're going to be attending as a vendor especially with Texas Trade Days LLC we already pull a lot of uh, reach and a lot of responses with what we do on our own organically and paid with your help it would multiply that and amplify it in ways that we could not do on our um, on our own okay so it takes everybody it really does and I'll show you refresh it one more time and see the stats change with my share no not really nothing like that let me see if I can find a few more friends all right, where's the rest of us? There's Amanda. All right, let's see here. All right, I'll just do those three. And send the invite. See what happens. Let me refresh this page. You see there? Just three additional people. Give it a moment or two. And then bam, we went from 87. To 106 that's how important it is so we waited a several moments uh, for the share that I did uh, to to register with people reached and it did not it did not budge at all so I added just three more people I invited three just three more people 
to the event and we boosted it from just 57 to 106. That's 49 people reached in a matter of a few minutes just by inviting friends. That's it. So please, please, please be sure to do that for all of our events that you're going to be at all of our markets that you're going to be attending in our events for our events on Facebook. Okay. As it will help you out so much. All right. And so we're going to go down here. It still says one going. That's me. Zero interested. But look, when you click on that. A pop-up window shows up for guests you can search them and all of that too once you have a bunch so nobody's interested nobody's responded as interested only I have responded as going to accept the host uh, the co-host uh, invite and then only invited nine people that's all I did and we boosted the reach 49 additional people than what the event did alone being posted to the page all right so that's how that works and that's why it's so important to do that just hover over share click invite friends and select the ones you want to invite you can select them all okay just, you know, don't be too uh, gregarious when selecting everybody. Facebook's real sensitive to uh, spam-like behavior. So um, definitely, you know, do a handful at a time. But do it so far out to where you're not trying to cram everybody in there within a week. Okay? All right. So we're going to scroll down. This is where you'll see the details of the page of the event. And then this is about the venue, which ends up being about the page because that's what we did. And then there's more events happening at that by Texas Trade Days. And then a gallery combination of the page as well as the location. Okay. Yeah. See, now we're starting to reach enough people here that the audience is starting to trigger stats. So that's good. All right. So there isn't a whole lot to do with the events uh, once you're done you know setting it up then it's up to you to start promoting it boosting it sharing it inviting your friends uh, by the drop down menu under share if you're on mobile you just tap on it and then hit invite friends and uh, that sort of thing it's all un always under the share so you can manage posts you can get more responses that's going to be boosting the event you can add to your page you can duplicate the event. You could create a QR code that's scannable from another smartphone. You can export the event. You can export the guest list. And then you can cancel the event too. So let's go over to the discussion tab. And this is going to be where all of the posts are located for the event. So anytime anybody posts in the event or you want to post in the event, it's all going to be in the discussion tab. Let's upload a photo. All right. We're going to create a post here. So there you go, it shows up in the discussion tab. We go over to the about and we write a post. We 
click post and it says view your post in the event discussion so it all moves under the discussion tab so you can click that and you see how it moved from about to discussion there we are that's what happens okay and then of course you'll see boost unavailable on the post in the event that means you cannot promote them if you hover over it this pop-up bubble will give you the message saying this post can't be boosted you can choose from a list of your eligible posts to reach more people and get more engagement and then you can see eligible posts so you really cannot boost a post under an event okay you can boost the event just not the post in the event so let's go over to insights and I'll show you about insights these are insights directly related to the post itself okay look we got two responses isn't that great we only have a few more minutes left of the event they better hurry up right so we reached a hundred and forty nine people posting the event sure helps too so you want to be sure that you do that whether you're a vendor attending the event or a host of the event or if you added the event to your page and you're attending it all of that helps post in the event it helps it helps it helps so it has 34 event page views as two responses tell me who they are uh, not in the screen then the audience that's who has been seeing the event on Facebook it's broken down by age and gender and location so the left horizontal markers are going to be the percentage of people reached and the number ranges below are the age ranges of people reached so also because we have a low number of respondents um, once those numbers increase then you'll see more stats there let's go let's edit this event said you know what I rather it I want to be a little longer so we're gonna do 530 there we go oh but it can't be in the past now let's do 5 5 p.m. to 5 okay we'll do that for now and let's do 5 30 feel better with that no one going on too long all right so there we go so we're back to the insights tab of the event refresh this and see what's happening with it nothing all right and just breaks it down just breaks the stats down even more there's recommended actions again those are tips to help you increase your reach and engagement and get more people knowing and responding to the event so you can share the event add a ticket link add an event video and then as your event grows this will start changing a little bit and you'll get more recommendations so we're going to look at the comparison 
between all of the Texas Trade Day LLC events and this event. And we can do that. And you can do this for any of your uh, Facebook uh, business page events. So once you have a list going, past and present, um, either one, and then you'll start gaining a response, you know, stats um, all across the board. So you'll see here, this is for your page. You can change this if you want. Get to the right page. The date range. So it defaults to the last 365 days. That is not year to date. That is for a full year. So this would date back to August 20th, 2018. That's a year, year prior to today. So there's the number of events hosted, including a co-host. We've hosted more than that, but this is a new page uh, since we did the name change. So this page is only about a year or so old. There are more than that. And then uh, the number of people who had info about your events enter their screen. So that's the total people reached. That's 486.9 thousand people. And 82.3 thousand people have been reached just in the last 90 days. Event responses, the total number of people who responded interested or going to your events, be 39.4 thousand event responses and not, over 9.7 thousand of those were in the last 90 days. We offer ticket links or ticket um, options because we link to a ticketing website where we advertise on as well. And because of that, I have this statistic here, this insight, the total number of clicks on the link to tickets on your event. And that's 600, that 6,000 ticket clicks with over 1.1 thousand in the last 90 days. This shows the number of active posts, recommended actions are up here too. So share the event and it, it this is an event here. It's a link. It'll let you know which event. So it's telling me that it might be an idea. They recommend that I share these events, all of them. Every single one of them. All right. And then this is a list of published events. You can even see the draft and scheduled events. We don't have any. So all of our events have been published. You can sort by event date or published date. You can search for a specific event, and of course you can also create an event. So we have the events, and these are all clickable links. This is the budget spend, and that's for your ads. How much has how, how much has been put towards the ads? So only people with access to your ad account can see this. Okay. And then that's the reach, the number of unique users that have seen your event. Responses, the number of interested or going responses to your event. And then ticket clicks, the number of times people clicked your ticket link on Facebook. So we don't have any data for that in our event today because we don't have a ticket link but we have two responses and 149 people reached So that's it for the insights 
for events of the page. So let's go back to the event. Let's see. Aha! We have Amanda attending. Uh, she says she's interested. So you can message them. So if there's more information you need to send out to everybody or uh, it's important stuff, uh, use it sparingly. Uh, you should be able to message the attendees if that option is available. And then you see a list of recent posts now. And this is under the About tab. If you're not on the About tab and you're under Discussion, you don't see the responses. When you see the responses and the details, then you know you're on the About tab of the event. All right. And then at the bottom, you see now here two posts in the discussion. Another way to get over to the Discussions tab. All right. So when you're added as a co-host to your Facebook business page events, it shows up here. I'm not in the page. I, if I wanted to manage page events, I can click on the specific page to manage the that specific page's events. But this is my personal side of Facebook, on my personal account. And uh, so you see that because it shows you upcoming birthdays of your friends. So uh, anyway, so these are the, the ones that I'm either a co-host or I'm hosting. So these Move It Mondays, you see it's for uh, our Texas vendor group. So I allow uh, vendors to sell their things every Monday in that event. And it's a great way to practice um, advertising and you know sharing events and and kind of just you know working out the kinks with your Facebook advertising and posting in events it kind of gets you familiar with doing all of that um, so that's a great thing for you to do too you can find it um, by doing a search up top here and do move it Monday it's online Texas vendor sales event okay and it happens every Monday they're only for one day, but they repeat every Monday, okay, from 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. All right, and then there's the co-hosted ones I have with my Facebook business page. And then you'll see if I click on one of these, let's do our test event. If I click on it, then it looks exactly the same exactly the same our people reached has gone up especially since Amanda posted interested and when she did that what happened was Facebook automatically generated a post on her uh, news feed to all of her friends that she is now interested in this event so that helped reach people on her friends list okay so this happens with every time somebody says they're going or interested in your event so it's really really important too to help out the market when you go to sign up for one of our markets and then go over to Facebook and then click going on the um, event right here click going at the very least interested but if you're a vendor and you signed up for it click going and then that will automatically notify your friends and that will be just one less thing you have to do right off the bat and uh, then you can just share it you can after you invite all your friends and then you can share it on your personal page you can add it to your Facebook business page uh, you can share it to your Facebook business page uh, wall or timeline and uh, so <clears throat> you know it does help out with that initial thing and that's really really important and Facebook knows that so we'll go back to events I'm hosting and you'll see past and present and just so you know this is your 
your personal one because this upcoming birthdays will give it away okay then here on the bottom underneath the upcoming birthdays says you can add your events to Microsoft Outlook Google Calendar or Apple Calendar once you add them they'll stay updated then you click learn more to learn more details about that and then you can see upcoming events okay then we can go up here to calendar this is your personal one okay this will show on all of your all of your uh, events that you've said that you're going or interested in see uh, there's a class I was said I was going to this week and then uh, then there's our event right here I said I was going all right but then down here too I said I was interested in these two events but they still show up on my calendar so I can always go over to my Facebook calendar and see what events I said I was going to and when they're coming up so and then again you can share right from there okay this is a private private event so I don't have the option to share but on those that are public I do just hover over it there it is right there invite friends and it does the same thing see all right and that's there they are and it reminds you about your friends birthdays okay so that's what your calendar is about then you click on birthdays then you can easily wish your friends a happy birthday then there's discover and it's always going to default to whatever you know whatever's close by your location as it's registering on the device that you're on okay that's a whole list of events here more times than not it's going to show you events you have not said that you're going to in hopes to show you uh, more events for you to explore and discover so don't be surprised that if you did if you create an event and you're like oh my gosh it's not showing up it will but maybe not to you okay and you may not be in the area that the events in you know what I mean so we could come over here and we can still select the city this is available on uh, the computer the desktop version but and it's I think it is on the the app version but it's limited so you still see you know we don't we don't have ours we don't see our event for today or for this this coming week because it almost always just shows you what you have not signed up for you see this is for today as you see over here in the filters the time today the location tomball which is what the address is on the page so that's location it uses and it doesn't show up so don't don't get upset that you don't see your event in the in the calendar or the um, discover section so we're going back out of here get to the main page there we go so that was the discover section and then we can go to events and it shows your upcoming events you can see all upcoming events by clicking on that then events you may like so like I like the fall antique show things all day all week long and I clicked interested but yet this over here in Warrington I didn't click but it's still a part of what's in brown top Warrington is nearby so I didn't I didn't click it so that's something new for me so I'm gonna go ahead and click interested so you can do that and then click see more events and it 
take care to discover. You see events that are popular with friends, shopping events. This is one of those things that is important for you to uh, make sure that you set the right category. Recently announced, this is new, newly posted events. Again, it's not going to be anything that you've said you're going to. So ours today wouldn't show up. But we do show up in the feed. There is a little bit of a feed for events. And so it shows you the ones that you have said you're going or interested in. So you can kind of see what's happening. Okay. And then you can also create an event here. But, okay, so there is a caveat here. Since you're under your personal account, you have the option to create a private event or a public event. Don't do this thinking that it's going to go to your, your Facebook business page. If you see the option to create a private event, that should tell you right away you're not creating an event for your Facebook business page. Okay? So in order to do that, you need to go back to your, your Facebook business page. And we'll do that now. create an event. See there's no drop down menu that shows up. Just when I hit event, there it is. That's all. It doesn't even give you the option because it's automatically going to be public because your Facebook page business page is public okay Alright, so you would do the same thing if you've got a brand new page like this page is. You can create the event here as the same thing. Remove that photo or choose from photos to change it. Okay, you can't reposition these really. Sometimes they'll give you the option, but it's the same on a new page as it would be on one that's established. Did not mean to go over there. All right, so don't have an events tab here. So it's like, you know, I really, really want to add that. I think I could do that. So let's go add that events tab. go down to add a tab there's the events tab Let's add it close the window there it is I want to put my events up there because those are my money makers that's where I'm going to sell my things to people face to face so I want that up up at the top Let me go back to the page double check make sure that the events tab is now listed in our menu for the page and it is and click on it and it looks just like the events page on an established Facebook business page just the only thing is is you don't have any events all those are checked by default 
I do not suggest unchecking either one of those. Just leave it alone. It's where the magic happens. Click on event. Same thing. Okay? So it doesn't change whether it's for a new page or an established business page. It doesn't change. So uh, you will be able to use these time and time again, uh, this, these tips from this video time and time again. Uh, Facebook does like to update and you know rearrange things and all. So, but once you learn the basics, which is basically what this is, uh, then you should be able to find your way around pretty well in the events uh, area on Facebook. Uh, so that you can kind of keep up with the little changes and just go around there, poke around, create a test uh, event like I did today. And, uh, you know, and just kind of do that if you want to practice sharing and posting and that sort of thing and inviting your friends. Feel free to jump in on those uh, events for the uh, Texas Vendor Resource and Events Group. You can find that on our page under the Groups tab. So you just go to Groups, and then it's this event here. So all you have to do is just click on it, and it'll take you over to the group. Okay? And then you just click on Events in the group, and there it is. And so you just click on it, and it looks the same. So you can practice uh, inviting uh, your friends here you can practice sharing as a post you can practice a discussion like some have already posted in here so you can definitely get tips from everybody and, and work out the kinks with your with your online advertising and uh, in these Facebook events okay so just have fun with it the more familiar you are with it all the easier it will be in the long run you know, and uh, the more uh, lightly you'll be able to take any of the changes uh, when and if they happen on Facebook. But, you know, the more prepared you are, the more, more easier it becomes. So anyway, if you have any takeaways for your business uh, that you'd like to share with us, feel free to drop them into the comments below this video. Um, and then if you have any tips or tricks that you have learned along the way while using Facebook events, you can also drop them in the comments. We would all love to see what they are. And uh, it's always great when we have a community that loves sharing and helping each other out. So I hope that this video serves you well and have a good day.